Now that you've explained the six stages and we've already talked about stage one, the setup, can you also talk about uh, what happens in stage two, which is still in act one? Yeah. Um, so as I said, at about the 10% point of the story, something that's never happened to the hero before is going to happen. And that's the opportunity. It can be something good, uh, meeting the person of their dreams, if it's a romantic comedy, let's say. It can be something terrible, like uh, the first body in a serial killer movie is discovered, or the spaceship that the aliens are landing on Earth in shows up. Whether it's good or bad though, it's going to be something that forces the hero into stage two, a new situation. And in this stage, the primary goal of the character is to figure out what's going on. I've entered this new world. Sometimes in movies, it's even a change of geography. To go back to quite an old movie now, Thelma and Louise, it's when they leave town and go off to spend the weekend in, at some guy's cabin or something like that. Um, in uh, The Firm, it's when he takes the job with Bandini, Lambert, and Locke. Locke and he and his wife head to Memphis. It could be geographical change, it might not be, but something, they're in a new situation and they have to figure out, what am I doing here? What are the rules of this world I'm entered? What is expected of me? Or how am I gonna deal with the discovery of that body? Or what am I gonna do about this, this, um, this uh, person I just met. Um, a movie that I really enjoyed a lot this year is Eye in the Sky. And we meet our hero, Helen Mirren, you know, waking up and we see her living her everyday life. We see that she's in the military and so on. She gets a call and when she gets to the base or whatever it is, she discovers that they have found uh, or they have confirmed that a group of terrorists, particularly these two Americans, have shown up and she's been dogging after them. So she's got to figure out, okay, how are we going to go about following them or capturing them once they're all together? And she's trying to figure out, what do I do? Now, on the inner journey level, in stage one, we see the character living fully in his identity. Okay, like I mentioned, Will Hunting and Goodwill Hunting. Or if you take a character like Hitch, who is also had his heart broken, so he's shut down and he'll help, help other people fall in love, but he doesn't believe in love for himself. He's stuck. In stage two, the character is still in his identity, still fully protected, but the character will get a glimpse of what living fully, living in his essence might be like. So that's in Hitch when he first meets um, Albert Brenneman, the Kevin James character, who for all his schlubby uh, personality is way more courageous and way more understanding of the value of falling in love than Hitch is. So he gets just a look at what that might be like. He doesn't really register, but we recognize, okay, this is what this person needs to learn. We recognize early on in the story, this is the journey this character needs to go on on the inside. And then at the end of stage two comes what I call the change of plans. Another key turning point, another thing happens that has never happened before. And that's going to move the character from figuring out what's going on to formulating a goal, that visible goal, and taking the first steps to achieve it. So when that happens, let's go back to eye in the sky. What happens there is they discover that these terrorists have moved to a different location. The location they can't go in and capture the terrorists because it will create you know, chaos outside. The only way they can stop them is to use a drone, fire a missile, and bomb them. Just you know, kill them, blow them into oblivion. So now the outer motivation for Helen Mirren becomes she wants to Use a, use a missile on a drone to kill the terrorists in this building. And the rest of the movie will be her pursuit of that goal and all of the obstacles she will encounter in trying to get there, all of the conflict. And I should mention this, probably should have mentioned it earlier in the interview, but I'll say it now. I began this by saying the primary goal of any storyteller is to elicit emotion. One thing that's critical to understand is emotion grows out of conflict not desire. So the more you can build up the obstacles the characters have to face, the more emotionally involving the story will be.
Why is that? Is that because of uh, identification? Because we all kind of relate it back to something that's happened to us, and if do we see someone struggling even more than we are, then it becomes more interesting, or it holds our attention? Yeah, partly it's that. I, I mean, the, the why exactly conflict locks us in emotionally, it's, I believe, actually because our brains are wired for that. Going all the way back to evolution because we had to be alert to when we were cavemen or wherever we evolved from, then we had to be alert to danger. So emotion is always going to be heightened when there's a moment of some obstacle or conflict or danger. And that has gotten so ingrained into our brains that it's spilled over and it's true for stories and narrative as well. So it's almost a visceral biological reaction to conflict, but that's why people go to the movies, that's why they read novels, that's why they go to plays or watch television so they can have an emotional experience. So that means we go to see conflict. Desire is just there to move the story forward, but it's the obstacles that are going to grab us and hold us in. So when it comes to empathy, you notice that the things I mentioned that could create empathy, let's say sympathy, that's conflict that the character has experienced in the past. We feel, feel sorry for them because they're poor or they had a tough childhood or we find out their spouse has just died as in Sleepless in Seattle or whatever. Okay? Or another way is you put a character in jeopardy. That's conflict that's coming in the future, that they're in danger of getting on the Titanic, which is going to sink. Or they're in danger of encountering the villain that was introduced before they were in the movie, or whatever it might be. Or, or I said, if a character is likable, good-hearted, generous, that's how they help others deal with conflict. So the empathy, the emotional connection between hero and, or between audience and hero, or reader and hero, also grows out of the conflict that they are subjected to, or were subjected to, or will be, so that the reader recognizes that, and that gets them more emotionally involved in the hero. Mm. 